Oh wait, I've seen this thing on lots of lists and in YouTube videos. Not for me. <laughs> this one just seems so ridiculous. abso friggin lutely So I'd say no for this one. Doesn't make sense to me. Hey, travel lovers, welcome to A Wanderlust for Life. I'm Jessica, and in this video, we're gonna talk about those websites that are more like listicles that tell you these are the must-have travel items. So as somebody who travels very, very often, I thought I would take a look at this list and tell you whether or not it's full of crap or not. So let's dive right in. Number one, anti-blister balm. This is not a good start because I've never used this. So I want to hear from you if you have and if it works. I would assume that it would work in certain scenarios. This is really talking about, you know, shoes and feet. Um, but I guess I try to, you know, uh, break my shoes in in time. And I also use things like um, kind of a blister band-aid thing after it comes. So maybe I need to look into this, but you let me know, is, is it worth it? A waterproof pouch for your phone. abso freaking lutely I use this. I take this whenever I go to like a water destination. A couple reasons for this. One, you can actually usually use your phone through the pouch. And two, you can just have it on your neck. So if you're hiking a little bit or you're walking along the beach and you're just in a swimsuit and a cover up or something like that, you can just have it on your neck. And it is waterproof and I think they are great. I don't really think it matters what brand that you get. I've gotten just one off of Amazon. Also, I will link uh, all of these things either down in the comments or I'll link to um, my Amazon storefront where then you can find everything. So uh, yeah, definitely a yes for me. Ear planes. I have bought two pairs of these because I keep losing them. They're so small, but I bought two pairs. So that definitely means it's a yes from me. I love them. They, so they're little earplugs that are specifically designed for like the frequency of airplane sounds. So it does block out a lot of the airplane sound, but also kind of the ambient sound around you, but they are not like full on earplugs, but I, I do, I love them. And they're very soft so you can sleep in them, which I thought it was really important, especially on those like 13 hour flights. Airfly, another one I haven't used, but I've heard really good things about for the most part. I do see there's some comments on whether it connects properly to your phone. Honestly, I tend to just take a uh, plug headphones uh, that go into the um, the entertainment center and I use those because I would rather not faff with you know an extra thing and trying to like make it pair with my earbuds like it's just not worth it so get a cheap or get a nicer pair I personally got a pair of uh, Bose uh, headphones and I love them and I got them refurbished so maybe that's something that you can think about so that they're not quite as expensive as they would be if you bought them new. A digital luggage scale is definitely a yes especially depending on where you're traveling so if you're traveling in Europe or Asia there might be requirements or limits on your hand luggage specifically. Now you should also use this on your check bags because they can be pretty strict. I think kind of the norm is like 23 kilos, but definitely check your airline and it really beats like standing on a scale with your suitcase. And yes, I have absolutely done this at my grandma's house. <laughs> Because if you didn't see the video about like when I go back to the US and stuff, basically I bring a lot back and Actually, my scale battery died, so I should probably fix that. But it's so much easier and it's so small that you can just pack it in your suitcase and it doesn't take up much room. A zipper puller, especially if you are going somewhere by yourself, um, and this is more for women just because of the design of women's clothes, but if you have a zipper down the back of your dress or something, you might want something to kind of pull it up if you're not quite as flexible and like able to, you know, touch your fingers behind your back. So that could be a definite yes for you if that's how you travel. Travel document holder. Now, I, I have mixed feelings about this one. So I travel either by myself or with my husband. I have a travel uh, case for my passport that is RFID protected. That is from PackSafe. If you want that, I'll put that in the shopping list as well. Um, but I don't have a document holder. Typically because most of my things are digital. So I'll have my booking.com thing on my phone or you know my um, airplane stuff, my train stuff is usually on my phone. 
But if it's not, or if you don't know if you'll have internet or data on your phone when you get somewhere, print out things for sure. What they're showing is kind of a pouch for a family so that you can put all the passports together. Um, I think it whatever works for you. I just don't feel like I need extra, something extra to hold other things in, like money and stuff like that. I just put whatever money I'm using in my wallet like my regular wallet, but I know some people will take extra money, they wanna put it in their document holder, and that will then go in the safe, which also makes total sense. Um, I'll put some examples that I would suggest based on ratings, but also brands that I know and love in the shopping guide. A white noise machine? I don't know, what do you guys think? Personally, I feel like your phone has so many apps that you don't need to buy a separate machine. If you want to get like a, a travel speaker, maybe maybe that makes sense for you. But I mean, we really like like sleep sounds and we just use our phones. And typically if you're somewhere with Wi-Fi, you can do that. Uh, or you can download something before you go. And whether that's Spotify, you can have a download list, um, things like that. So I'd say no for this one. Doesn't make sense to me. So this one is uh, a subtle beauty stack. And you know, it's, it's like this tub of makeup that just stacks on top of each other. Now I think it's great if you can find exactly what you're looking for, but I don't know the quality of the makeup. You know, there are so many people with skin, like skin sensitivities that they stick with the brand that they know and you can't really do that with this. So that's a no from me. Ally E U four in one pen. Again, a makeup thing, not a fan. Again, with the brands, you wanna use what brand that you're comfortable with that you know works with your skin and your color and things like that. I just, it just doesn't, yeah, it just doesn't make sense to me. Mm -mm. But the next one, the Tide to Go pen is a must. So much so that I stock up on them when I go back to the United States. And that was in that video that I mentioned. <laughs> Do you want a video of all the little things that I travel with to make life easier? If you do, let me know, because I think that could be a fun one. Over the years, and I've been traveling frequently, um, like before 2020, I think I was away from home like 100 days a year. I don't know what the number is right now, but it's a lot. And uh, I've kind of dwindled down my list, so uh, let me know if you want that video. Magnetic hat holder. Now. I love this idea personally. I think it is great, especially for somebody who likes to have hats that help uh, with photos. And I tend to have bags that have some kind of loop where I can hang that off of. Now I don't have one of these. I actually, <laughs> uh, from the US, I got, oh, I have it right here. I have this thing. Um, I don't even, what is it called? Uh, it's called the, the Clippa. And this is actually not to clip on hats, but it is what I use it for because my hat has a little tag in the back that I can loop it through. Um, but it has fallen off because it's just tension. Uh, this is a, for a table. So you can put it on the table and hook, hook your back here. This should be in that video I just mentioned, the little things that I love to travel with. So please let me know if you want that. I think I'm gonna do it anyway, because I think it'll be fun. This is a classic, but for good reason, a travel pouch. So this might be one, so I use PackSafe a lot, so I'll recommend them, but um, there's one that hooks onto your bra, depending on what kind of bra you have, goes around your neck and co can go under your shirt, or a waistband that can go under the waistband of your pants or dress or whatever. So this is for really hiding those valuables. So they're typically sized to hold at least a passport and some money. So that's a really nice thing. If you're somewhere specifically that there's a high rate of um, like pickpockets or something like that. My only thing with this is that I don't love that if you need something, you have to like go in and get it. So I would really only put something in there that you really don't need all day, that it's for emergencies only, or just to feel comfortable that you have your passport on you, or you have your extra money on you if you don't trust hotel safes. I did buy one, I was it was a specific situation, and I bought the one around the waist, and honestly, I haven't used it since that situation. I tend to use bags that have um, security features. I've talked about them a million times, Times. the pack safe bags I just that's what I use I've been using them for probably eight nine years now and that's what I would recommend so this is kind of depending on how you travel if you need this a retractable lint roller heck yeah I mean why not especially if you have pets or you're staying with pets or you're staying in a farm stay 
or whatever reason that you might have to want a lint roller, sure, go for it. A luggage mounted cup caddy. So I just, I, I don't like this. I don't like this. I feel like it's just too much. Also, <laughs> you have to deal with it when you go on the plane. Like you can't leave it on your bag because you're gonna put it in the overhead. Um, and then if you're using checked bags, you're not really gonna be needing it very much. So I figure if you're at the airport, schedule enough time so you can sit down and eat or drink. I do think it could be handy if you have a long wait, a long layover maybe, and you're kind of doing a makeshift um, like picnic in the airport. I don't know, it's not for me, but I'm curious if any of you have used it. Just, yeah, not for me. This one just seems so ridiculous, but I don't drink coffee, so let me know. Uh, a portable espresso maker. Now, I think this is generally suggested for if you're hiking and you want your morning coffee, um, but I mean, you could absolutely use it in your hotel room. That makes sense to me, but I just feel like that's just overkill. No. An LED reading light. Um, I mean, I guess, sure. I don't see a reason for it. Like in the airplane, you have a light, but if you wanna keep it closer to you, I'm sure your neighbors would be more um, considerate. The one they're suggesting goes around the neck and it kind of angles down. Um, I don't know, what, what do you guys think? Uh, it's a no for me, I wouldn't buy that, but uh, yeah, I guess it depends on your travel situation. If you're on a bus for a long period of time, maybe that would be really helpful if you're trying to work or read or relax, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm curious what you think. Similar to the uh, kind of drink caddy for the bag, you can get uh, a travel belt that goes, kind of wraps your carry-on around the handle of your bag. Now I have seen this in use very recently actually, and it really helped the woman, although she obviously overpacked for the flight, but she was doing carry-on only because um, she's had her bag not show up too many times. So I totally understand where she's coming from. I don't think this is needed, especially if you travel more frequently and you have one that puts the, has the um, loop through so that you can slide it on. Still no. A fragrance atomizer. Now this is really interesting. I do have a friend that uses this. I've never used it myself, but I do think it's a really cool option if, if you really like perfume. I actually don't know that many people who use perfume anymore. Do you? Do you use perfume or cologne? Maybe me and my friends are just weird. I do have some, some scents that I really like, but I kind of forget about it. So it's a no for me, but I think it's a really cool thing. And I know people that use them and love them. Anti-chafing bands. Okay, so I have this problem. I think a lot of people have this problem, especially in hot places and your legs are rubbing together. Um, it's very, very annoying. I don't think I would do a chafing band, personally. I use shorts under dresses. Um, that's what's most comfortable for me. But I think whatever is most comfortable for you is what you should do in this case. A multi USB port, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, everything that we have nowadays is USB charging, right? Like, it just makes sense to have something like that. I use um, an anchor one. I will again leave it linked. And I use that all the time. I use that to charge my camera, my microphones, and then I have a cable for my laptop because the USB C has a higher wattage that I can use it for my laptop. But the reason I like mine is because it's slim and it has the cable. So you can make it as close to the outlet as you need if you're like working at a workstation and you need it really small or you can make it longer if you're plugging into a wall over there. I, I love this thing, I've had it for years and I will never give it up. Laundry bags, so I am very pro laundry bag. I didn't do this until a few years ago, but we got a set of uh, packing cubes that came with what I think of as a gym bag, like, you know, a drawstring bag. And we always take it now. We always take it, we hang it in the bathroom and we use that for the dirty dirties. So if it's pants or shirts or something, it can stay out, it can air out or anything else. But the dirty dirties, like socks and underwear, um, they'll go in the bag. And I love that. I love just keeping it separate and just having a place for it. Laundry soap sheets. Okay, so this is talking about 
um, the little pouches, they are quite expensive. Now I've started using laundry sheets at home, like um, regular laundry detergent. Sorry, I'm doing this because it slides out. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense to anybody else. And I really like them. So I am actually going to start traveling with those for longer trips, but I will say that my alternative for this is actually, I always travel with Dr. Bronner's. I always do, and that works for so many things in a pinch. Again, if you want a video about what I travel with, let me know, um, but I think that makes more sense if you're not worried about liquids. I mean, it's a small one. It's, it's under 3.3 ounces, 100 mils, so it's fine to travel with, but if you don't want liquids, I would still suggest maybe just buying regular laundry detergent strips and not the travel ones. A portable door lock. Now everyone from flight attendants to digital nomads will tell you that if you want a sense of security, a portable door lock is the way to go. I am not opposed to this idea. I think you need to do what makes you feel safe, period. You don't need me to tell you what that level of security is for you. But what I use, and I kind of like this idea a little bit better, is I bought <laughs> this little thing. It just looks like a little teardrop. I think it's supposed to be a whale or something like that. But it's silicone on top. It's super, super grippy. And you pop this under the door and it can't be open. Like you can use as much force. We've tested it in the house and it can't be open. It's super lightweight. There's no gadgets. There's no batteries. There's nothing like that. It's really easy to use. It's dummy proof. Some of these things you have to wrap this around this and stick this in the door and then there's a high pitched sound. And if you're in somewhere super, super sketchy, A, I would obviously try to avoid that as much as possible, but B, you know, it can be set off by, so one of them is like, if you jiggle the door, it can be set off. I don't know if that's what you'd want. So look into these things a little deeper and maybe watch reviews online if you can find them to make sure that you get whatever safety thing that you need to make you feel good. Drop it. Okay, I, okay. I get what it's trying to do and you're supposed to be able to like drink wine and not get the headache the next day or whatever. I don't know. I don't understand the science behind it. So it's a no for me that maybe that's naive of me just to be like, I don't understand it. I don't want it. But also maybe just don't drink too much. Easier said than done sometimes. I know, especially when you're going to Italy or France or Spain or Portugal, but I think you just need to know your own limit. Maybe check it out if it's something interesting to you, but no for me. Oh okay, wait, I've seen this thing on lots of lists and in YouTube videos. Not for me. <laughs> so it's lay and go. And basically it's, it's a thing that you basically open this bag and all your makeup things are inside or whatever you want to use it for. It's for makeup. I think it was designed for that. And then you just pull it up and, you know, cinch it up and you throw it in your bag. If that's how you want to need to travel, if that's how your brain works, go for it. For me, I have a tiny little makeup bag. I actually don't use a lot of makeup. <laughs> So that's just me. So I don't know if somebody who did use a lot of makeup, if that would be a lot more handy, but it's a bit too chaotic for me. <laughs> this light keeps clouding up and then coming out. So I know the lighting keeps changing. So I'm sorry about that, but that's Dutch weather for y'all. <laughs> a portable fan. Okay, full disclosure, I've been wanting one for a while and I haven't bought it yet. Um, and now we're coming into fall, so I don't really feel like I'll need it as much, but I do plan on getting it before next summer because I feel like there are so many situations that you just need that little bit of extra. I do plan to get one that sits upright so you can like put it on a table or something and you can hold it in your hand, stuff like that, because I think it would be a huge help to both me and Sean. I mean, I think we'll only get one because it is still bulky, like when you pack it, but it's a yes, yes for me. A phone mount. Okay, I have a couple thoughts about this. The one they show on the list, I do see everywhere. I haven't used that one specifically, but I don't like the design part of it because I feel like it's very limiting. Now that's gonna happen with pretty much anything that you use, right? But I think there are other options. If you're a creator or if you have a tiny little tripod just so that you can take selfies, put that on your airplane table and put your phone on there and watch your videos or whatever you're watching on there. I don't think you need to hang it from something, but something that I did get from the US 
It's not available here in Europe, but I did find an alternative in Germany. So I'll link that in a thing. Um, is this flex flap. And basically you can do this and stuff with it. What I love about this is it's very multi-purpose. So when I was on the plane, I would use it to watch movies. You're supposed to be able to like stick it into the chair and do this. I, I found that a little difficult, but it just depends on the airline. And I also used it when I was in the hotel room. So I followed Sean, um, he went on a work trip and I needed to work as well. So I actually folded it up like this and I had it on the desk so I could see my phone. I also use this to edit shorts and stuff. So I put this there and I tap along. Um, so I think it's very useful. And I think it, because it's so lightweight and so skinny, I would prefer this over the one that they suggested. An external battery is a no brainer. You cannot leave home without it. If you're gonna be out all day, no matter if you're home or if you're traveling, seriously, we do this all the time. Mine is right here. Okay, like I said, we just got home <laughs> from traveling. So my um, bag is right here. This is mine. It's Anchor, again, same brand that I mentioned before. I love this thing. So this one is 20,000 milliamps. I think that's the biggest that you can take on a plane. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I know you will. But I love it so much. You charge it up, it does take quite a while to charge up, but once it's charged, it lasts for a very long time and you can charge multiple phones, multiple cameras, all of that with this baby. Always have this. I'm gonna link my favorites down there for you because Anchor is the way to go. Travel soap sheets, so for your hands. So I already mentioned the laundry one, but travel ones for your hands. Uh, again, I would use Dr. Bronner's for this, like the liquid stuff. So it's a no for me. You have to determine if it's right for you, but I don't know. I just, because basically they were saying there's places where they don't have hand soap and I get that. I think at this point I have hand sanitizer on me. I had that before 2020 and I will continue to have hand sanitizer for those situations. So that's a no. C-bands, yes, 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 yes. I know people look at some of these things and they're like, I don't believe that this actually works. For me, C-bands work. I know they don't work for some people, but I will not travel without them, especially if I'm going to a water destination because I just, or bus. I use them mainly for water and bus. It's just like, it's a no brainer. And I lose those too sometimes. They're probably with my airplane earplugs. This sponge sunscreen applicator is such a hit. I don't have it, but I have friends that have, and not even friends with kids. They just love it themselves. It is so much easier to put on sunscreen, so I would recommend it just by proxy. A travel clothesline. This has always made me curious because I just don't feel like I would find a place to do it. I know they say that you can hang it anywhere, but I would just, I just, yeah. I usually use the hangers, although sometimes the hangers don't come out of the closet, if you know what I mean. Um, but I do tend to use the hangers to hang up clothes. And if I'm somewhere for a long time, maybe a laundromat, I don't know. I don't travel with it, but if you do, let me know uh, if you find it useful. And if you have a brand suggestion, um, put that down below, but don't put a link because it auto blocks uh, links um, because people would put spam links and stuff. So just write the name of something down there if uh, you have a suggestion. Pill organizers. This is a confusing one because I think if you're traveling around the US domestically, it's fine. Um, but some international places, like you really have to have things in packaging. Um, and that, that's a safety, legal, whatever standpoint. So be very, very, very careful with that. If you love my content, I just wanted to mention Patreon because over on Patreon, it's a membership site. We do live streams, you get discounts, and I give you kind of post-trip updates before they really go anywhere else. And so it's a little bit of a closer connection with me and my travel. So if that's interesting, I will leave that link right up here for you. A three-in-one wireless charger. Now, this has been all over the internet for like the past nine months or so. And I love the idea. I love how flat it is. And because it's wireless, you really don't have to have all the cables with you. But I think I just don't have enough that uses wireless to justify it. So yeah, but if you do, I think it's a great idea for sure. An all-in-one travel adapter for the wall. Now, I already mentioned the Anchor slim line plug-in thing, which I use all the time, but 
If you're traveling somewhere where you have a different outlet, I understand that that's kind of annoying. You can get a plug, which I have one, it's so old, I don't even have a link to the original one. So whenever I link to it, I link to a newer one that has great reviews that looks exactly the same. <laughs> um, but I do like it because it has multiple USB plugs in, in it, but you can also plug something else in it. So it kind of acts as a multi, yeah, charging tool. TSA friendly containers. I've talked about this in a video before, but I am definitely all for them. I think if you buy either big bottles of something so that you're not A, spending more money and B, making more waste, and then you can refill these bottles. I use GoTube. Is it GoobTube or GoTube? I think it's GoTube. I always said GoobTube, but I really like those. It's very high quality, um, big mouth, so that it's very easy to clean on the inside. Everything pops apart really easily, and they did so much research to make sure a lot of different kinds of viscosity, like the thickness of the liquid can go through. So um, highly recommended. And yeah, especially if you don't go the bar route. I know a lot more people, including myself are going, um, like I have face wash, that's a bar, shampoo, conditioner, all of that is all a bar. So if you're not going the bar right route, <laughs> um, get some tubes to use. An anti-theft backpack. Well, I'll show you the one I have right here. It's kind of messy, hold on. Sometimes I think you guys don't think that I actually use the things that I tell you that I use because like I've had comments like, oh, it's just a marketing channel now. No, it's actually, I just honestly want to share things with you and I find new things and I love them and I want to share them with you and I only work with brands that I believe in. So um, if you don't believe me, then that's on you. But let me tell you, I love this stuff. So I did a review on this a while ago and this is my go-to bag. So we just got back from Italy and this is an anti-theft backpack. So basically, well, I'm gonna leave a link to the video because this video is already long enough. But basically there's lots of features in here to protect your stuff. And you can also wrap a strap around like a table, chair leg or something like that to um, make it so nobody can take your bag. And that's a pack safe bag. Been using them for years, like I said. <laughs> A makeup erasing cloth. Now I use this as just a washcloth for my face. Same, same. Because a lot of places in Europe don't actually give you washcloths. So yes, for me, if you don't wear makeup, it doesn't necessarily make sense for you, but maybe traveling with a washcloth does. The other thing with this is that it does dry fairly quickly, like a lot faster than a regular washcloth. So just keep that in mind. Um, even if you don't wear makeup, maybe it's still a good option for you. And lastly is compression cubes. I said a long time ago, if you wanted me to do a video on packing cubes, so let me know. And nobody said that they wanted them. So let me know in this video if you want me to talk about packing cubes because there are different kinds. And I will tell you my kind, not love-hate relationship, but kind of love and meh relationship with packing cubes because I feel like people are so much like, Yes, you have to use them. They're the end all be all. And no, that's just silly. So if you wanna know my opinion, I have an idea for a video and I can let you know. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and like, subscribe if you aren't already. I so appreciate you taking your time with me and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.